Hello viewers! Did you know that every engine in the world needs three basic things to work? Enough fresh air, fuel to go with it and once this mixture is compressed inside the cylinder, a spark to ignite it. Now if any of these three things is missing, your engine won't run correctly or at all. And in this video we'll find out what to expect if the fuel is missing from this equation, which will happen if your fuel pump fails or is on its last legs. Before going through the symptoms, we should briefly explain what the fuel pump does and how it works. Almost all cars today have the engine at the front and the fuel tank at the back. This is usually underneath the rear seats or the trunk. When the car is running, the fuel needs to get from the tank to the engine and that's where the fuel pump comes into play. Like any other liquid pump, it lifts the gas from the tank and sends it under pressure toward the engine. But because the engine's consumption differs depending on the driving conditions, the flow and consequent amount of delivered fuel must be controlled and adjusted as needed. This is done by a fuel pressure regulator which is found either on the fuel rail or as a part of the fuel pump assembly. In addition, cars with diesel engines or those with direct gas injection have an additional high pressure fuel pump. These take the fuel delivered by an in-tank pump and pressurize it to over 1000 bars before it gets injected into the engine. But because this is a highly complex and elaborate system, whose repair is far out of the scope of a do-it-yourself mechanics, we won't deal with it in this video. So that's how a fuel pump in a car works. And now let's see what happens when it stops working. Obviously, without enough fuel being delivered to it, your engine won't be running properly. So here's what you might expect when that happens. First, you may notice your car struggles when you press the throttle as if it has hiccups. Or the engine might be down on power, especially when driving at high speeds. Both these things could be caused by a worn fuel pump, which can generate sufficient fuel pressure. Without enough fuel being delivered to it, the engine will run lean, and if severe enough, this could cause a misfire on one or more cylinders. When this happens, you might notice juddering and vibrations when pressing the throttle, accompanied by unusual engine note. In addition, the check engine light in most cars will start flashing when a misfire happens. If the fuel pump fails completely, no fuel will be delivered to the engine, which won't start because of that. Or if the pump dies while driving, your car will cut out immediately. So if your engine doesn't start despite cranking strong and there is no noticeable fuel odor from the exhaust, the fuel pump is one of the likely causes. The combustion temperatures in an engine that runs lean will be higher than they should be, which may damage its internal components. And the spark plugs will usually take the biggest hit here as they will wear out quicker. You may notice that the tip and this insulator are bright white, which is a definitive sign that your engine is running lean. The engine that isn't getting enough fuel will struggle to build up revs. This also reduces the exhaust gas flow, consequently affecting the turbocharger's performance, which needs it to spool up. So if the turbo lag is more noticeable than usual, you might have a problem with the fuel pump. In most cars today, the ECM continuously monitors and controls the fuel pressure using dedicated sensors and regulators. And if their readings are off, the ECM will trigger a check engine light and store a trouble code in the diagnostic memory. But as you probably know, to retrieve it, you'll need an OBD2 scan tool. While a faulty fuel pump will usually create insufficient fuel delivery, it may sometimes do the opposite and generate higher pressures than it should. As a result, too much fuel will be added, causing the engine to run rich with all corresponding symptoms. This includes black smoke from the exhaust, a strong unburned fuel smell or, if severe enough, backfire. Most cars have a fuel pump inside the gas tank, fitted to a hole on its top side. Some vehicles will have a small hatch underneath the rear seat or at the trunk's floor through which the pump can be accessed. But many cars, sadly, don't have this handy feature, meaning you'll have to remove the whole tank from the car to get to the fuel pump. A conventional fuel pump is driven by an electric motor that, like any other such device, may fail if its internals wear out or break apart. While these motors in most modern pumps will usually last as long as the car, some things can cause premature failure. First is using low quality fuel, which might be contaminated with dirt and sludge, which increases mechanical wear and strain on the pump. A similar might happen if the fuel filter or lines are clogged, as the pump will have to struggle much more to push the gas through these obstructions. Lastly, there is a habit of driving with a nearly empty tank, as this may cause the pump, which should be cooled down by the surrounding fuel, to overheat. 
Apart from the fuel pump, you might have an electrical issue preventing it from working correctly. For a start, there's a relay inside the fuse box which powers up the pump. This is effectively a switch which may get stuck in the off position. A light tap with a rubber mallet might help in this situation, although this is only a temporary solution as such misbehaving relay should be replaced. Then there's wiring running from here all the way to the fuel pump at the back which may get damaged in several ways. And at that end we have a connector at the pump which could be loose or have corroded pins. Lastly the fuel pump has its own fuse which may be blown for any reason. If your car doesn't want to start and you suspect the fuel pump is to blame, you might try to test it first. Start by checking if you can hear the pump running. To do this, turn on the ignition but don't crank the engine. There should be a whirling buzzing noise from the back for a few seconds as the pump builds up the pressure. If it appears the pump doesn't work, you should first check its relay. These are usually located under the dashboard or inside the fuse box. The exact location, however, differs depending on the car and can be found in the owner's manual. The next thing to check is the pump's fuse, which you can find inside the fuse box in the engine bay. The easiest way to do this is by pulling it out to see if it's intact. With the fuse out and assuming it isn't blown, you can now check if the fuse box is getting the voltage using a multimeter. With the probes hooked up to the holder like so, you should read approximately 12 volts when the ignition is on. You can repeat this test at the pump side where you'll unplug the connector and measure the voltage. Again, with the ignition on you should have 12 volts at the wiring side of the connector. If there isn't any meaningful voltage, one or more wires may be broken or damaged. In addition, many cars have an inertia switch which shuts off the power supply to the pump in an accident. If all of the above checks out, the fuel pump is likely dead. But to be 100% sure, you can test the fuel delivery using a pressure gauge which you'll connect to this shredder valve on the fuel rail. With the fuel pump in good condition, you should see the pressure jump up to 3 or 4 bars within a second or two after switching on the ignition. But if nothing happens, the pump is not working. And if the pressure builds up very slowly, you might have a clogged filter or something else obstructing the flow. After pulling the fuel pump from the tank, you can do one more thing before finally scrapping it. And that's hooking it directly to the battery to see if it starts spinning, which it won't if it's broken. However, you must drain all the fuel before doing this, as you don't want the gasoline spraying all around if it does work. A new fuel pump doesn't have to be expensive, especially in a bit older cars, for which it usually costs less than 100 bucks. In most newer cars, however, the fuel pump pressure regulator, level sender unit and other components are integrated into one assembly. All these additional bits up the price which for some cars may be as high as $700. Apart from the fuel pump, you'll have to count on the labor costs if paying a mechanic to replace it. If there's an access hatch under the seat, this will be a quick job that shouldn't cost much. But the situation is quite different when the fuel tank has to be removed, as this takes much more time and effort. So viewers, you can now probably tell if your fuel pump is causing engine issues and know how to test it if that's the case. And more importantly, I hope you managed to fix the problem and that your car is now running fine. If so, give us a big thumbs up on this video and subscribe to our channel. But if not, something else could be causing these annoying issues. So, to continue troubleshooting, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for more detailed automotive repair guides. Bye!